Progress is underway. It's a coin slot plate. The mill is moving slowly through the stainless steel, making that skinny, skinny hole. It's ready for a stream of quarters to get put through it. This one should last a long time. It's almost 1 16th of an inch thick. The slot is about 76 thousandths wide and about 960 thousandths long, just like I designed it. Now I'm going to go through a little bit of SolidWorks here and show some of the details that I included in the design. Uh, we've got the uh, coin slot mounted on the front and a backing plate on the back. And the backing plate provides some thickness onto which I can screw some things. Uh, motioning the quarter through there. And you, you can see it's an optical sensor. So when it goes through it will tell the machine that a quarter has come through by an optical switch. These are the same opticals that I've been using on other parts of the Kineticon. You can go back and look, for example, on my video of the sliding door mechanism. I have, the, I have those things. Now it also includes a blocking system. This wire will, will pivot and it will plug that gap after the coin has come through and uh, after it's made itself known by that optical switch. So the quarter comes down the ramp, the switch isn't on yet, but now it's going to flag that adjustable position optical, and then that wire will slip in place there. And the reason why I want a wire coming in there is so that nobody puts another quarter in until the first one is done doing its job. On the original Kineticon, I had problems with that. People would put in a quarter, and then they would throw in a couple of dimes, maybe, and then another quarter on top of that and the dimes would get wedged between the quarter and the track or you know jammed by a third quarter coming through who knows anyway it was a possibility that it could get jammed the original kineticon had that little stopper applied at, in, in the end i figured out a way to put it on there it'll be actuated by a solenoid and um, it should work well it worked pretty well on the first one after i finally figured that out so I've got to make a block that holds all the stuff. And that block actually is what the coin slot itself, the stainless steel slot plate is mounted to. And the block has some features. Now I've hidden the plate there and the block has features to which I can mount the ramp, the sensor, the blocking mechanism, and the whole thing is going to get screwed into that corner piece. This is a place where I've got a pass through because I can cut the corner and I uh, have to figure out a way to trim it up. And I've included, those are, I'm pointing out screws there where I'll be able to mount uh, stabilization for the actual ramp itself. And the ramp will be on a little plate that also is attached. So it'll have multiple points of attachment where it can be taken on and, and taken off. That's the uh, plate on which the ramp is mounted and I'm moving back moving the uh, the coin blocker back and forth again the solenoid will be down below and a wire will come down through the table so it should be hidden down beneath beneath everything and I had to arrange the screws in sort of a position that would allow me to still put that wire in place I, ha I have yet to make that piece but I did make the block the holding block that all this goes on to. So go to the end if you want to see how that looks. That's the piece there. Needed some pockets and a bunch of holes tapped, drilled. And it gets a corner round on the one side because of the way it fits into the corner of the machine. There's the corner itself and so I've got round corners and it's got to stay flat so I've got to mill a pocket into that and I rounded that that right side and this thing will be anodized so I did a drawing of it and took it over to the mill and I found a piece of material 55 thousandths almost a sixteenth of an inch thick no sorry this is the uh, the three three sixteenths inch thick material just aluminum band sawed it out roughly put it in the mill and uh, paralleled the sides took some off the top and off the bottom so now you can see it clamps into the vise 
and then trimmed up the ends. Uh, once you get the ends, now, at this position I'm using um, conventional milling, but I'll do a final mill pass with uh, climb milling, which gives a much smoother finish. And I'll do that finish, then turn it around and finish the other side to the correct length. The length of it is 3.5 inches. And there you can see I've got the calipers on it and I'm right on. So now I took it back out, zeroed on it, and start started doing all the little steps. These are going to be 256 taps. There's a little 256 tap that I'll run through there. It's open on the back, so with this tap I can just drive through in low gear with a drop of oil on it. And down she goes, and then I stop it, turn it off, stop it with the brake, put it in reverse, drive it back up out. Works like a charm. Then the CNC mill finds the next hole, which have been, pro you know, the positions have been programmed in, and I make the taps. And I did include a kind of a neat view. It's a little bit of a shaky camera, but you can see how these two flute forward chip driving uh, taps work. They push the chip out in front. And uh, in a blind hole, they just make a, make a little pile of chips down in the hole. But for this purpose, they work really nicely. And they have the type of taps that will bring the chips up out of a blind hole, although I find them to be rather fragile. And here we are milling the pockets. Starting out with the pocket milling, the only through pockets on the whole thing. And then from there, we'll go on with some pockets to a certain depth. This is the block after most of the pocketing and drilling has been done. Now I'm just using a center drill to get that little hole started. And I'll put in a 1 16th inch drill bit. Drill that hole through. It goes through that one piece and right across to the other side. About a quarter of an inch to the other side. And then I've actually taken an even slightly larger drill bit. Just one size above the uh, 116th. I want to assemble this just for looks. I've got to find some screws. Let's see. 256. Those look a little long. Maybe they'll work. Or more half inch. I wish I had shorter. Quarter inch. Looks like those are going to be the ones. And I'll cut them off. This aluminum piece, of course, is going to get polished and anodized. Okay, now I need a couple of nuts to go behind there, and the quarter's coming through here. Let's get a quarter, shall we? So what it's going to look like from the back is that that comes through there, and then the stop pin will cross through this little hole. Well, I found some quarter-inch ones right there, and I found nuts, but not nylock nuts, so that's too bad. And then you can see that the quarter coming through here will then be blocked by this pin and this little 050 wrench. It kind of serves as a model for now. It's going to come through there like that. swing right through. Once that pin's in place, <laughs> there's no getting anything in that hole. You can see that little pin is in there and nothing's going through there. And it's low enough that even a dime won't go through. That blocks out people from putting in malicious coins after there's already one in it. And there we go. The beginnings of a coin mechanism, a coin uh, slot that's going to have some functionality to it. That's got a good start. That's going to do it for now. As I keep building, we'll see the coin ramps come together and all their details get added. The weird curves, the lights, the mechanisms and supports getting done, all of that. So until then, thanks for watching and bye.